Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm Somik Behera. I'm the, your moderator for today's panel on a lot of esteemed folks from various sizes of companies and various geographies who have deployed OpenStack in their companies. You know, we're gonna have, we're talk, they're going to talk about their experiences of how they brought OpenStack to their company, the challenges they faced, and what you can learn from it. So I'd encourage, I'm going to start with some feeder questions after introductions. And I would encourage for you guys to think of questions you'd like to ask them as well around challenges they faced so you guys can avoid it or you guys can better structure and be more prepared to bring OpenStack to your companies. Okay, with that, I'll introduce myself. I'm Somik Behera. I've been involved with OpenStack since the OpenStack Diablo release. First as a part of the founding team of uh, the quantum, the now, now known as the Neutron project. And then I have been involved with customer deployments and uh, as well as other various OpenStack outreach activities. And with that, I would let our panelists introduce themselves. It's going to go ahead. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Yuri Brodsky. I'm uh, from PayPal Cloud Engineering Team. Oh, Jesse Martin um, from eBay, sister company of uh, PayPal. But uh, I think that the, the, the reason why we are both here is because we, we started from a different point of view and we have different experience even if uh, at this, uh, as of today we are a part of the same team. Simon Anderson, I'm uh, CEO of DreamHost and the co-founder of Ink Tank. Hi everyone, I'm Shintaro Mizuno from NTT R&D. I'm a senior research engineer. G'day everyone, I'm Tristan Good, uh, CEO of Aptera. Um, we were made um, gold members of the foundation yesterday. I'm very happy about that. Congratulations. Great, thanks guys. So the first question I, you know, to the panel uh, would be, why OpenStack? Why did you choose OpenStack? I don't know, whoever wants to take it. Okay, so um, two reasons really. One of them was um, we were looking for alternatives. Um, we were using uh, VMware and the VMware um, memory tax um, was an issue at the time. So I know that's controversial and I know we talked about that before, but we were looking for alternative technologies that could fill that void. The other reason as well was um, we just wanted to find some sort of disruptive technology that was cool and fun. Um, and, uh, and I think we've picked the right horse in that respect. So for us, um, we selected OpenStack because um, before OpenStack, we were doing our in-house development um, to do the similar things. But this in-house software got so complicated and big, and we had, had a cost of it so much to uh, maintain that. So we were looking for the open source solution, uh, which was flexible and, and extensible and so that OpenStack was a good solution for us. Yeah. Uh, at DreamHost, we, we've been a hosting company for a long time, almost 16 years now, and uh, had shared hosting and virtual private servers based on you know, Linux and, and uh, our own code that we managed to, to essentially create these managed services that could scale up and scale down. And uh, a little over two years ago, two, two and a half years ago, when OpenStack was in its early days, we basically started to look at um, various cloud platforms that were open source um, because that's generally been our approach to developing infrastructure. And we really felt at the time, although it was quite a bit at the time, um, that OpenStack would have the best community, the most participants, which is really crucial to the scale of this, this project. And I think that's really proving itself out. Cool. So in our case, uh, it's a bit similar to um, uh, the, the other person that talked about their um, existing uh, software. So we developed our um, cloud automation uh, since 2008. And at the time, there was no solution. So we built it our, uh, ourselves. And today, uh, this solution is still running almost like 90% of the eBay site. Uh, but when we looked at adding new technologies, like for example, new hypervisors and network virtualization uh, two years ago, uh, we decided to go with OpenStack because there was uh, uh, already a good integration with network virtualization through the quantum project. 
and the um, support uh, out of the box of uh, various hypervisors like KVM. So we looked at the, the cost benefits of ad either adding those features to our existing cloud platform or starting adopting an open source project. And uh, from a cost benefit, it's obvious that uh, we would get much more leverage by using an open source project that is maintained by a huge community. And we saw that the community was ramping up very fast. So we knew that there was going to be uh, a lot of momentum behind it and uh, an ecosystem that would allow us to find vendors that would have drivers for OpenStack and allow us to build this abstraction between our automation and uh, the vendors so that we can have like, a multi-vendor solution. So for us, I think the experience was very similar as well with probably one difference. Um, PayPal did not have any cloud per se. We had virtualization. So when we started looking at the different cloud options, um, we had a couple of guiding principles in place, such as no vendor lock-in. We decided to go with open source, which was uh, new to PayPal as well from that perspective. And when we started looking around at what the options uh, were, it's the results were fairly similar to what JC just described, is there was a strong community, um, the project itself allowed us to build what we wanted to build to comply with the requirements uh, that we have from an availability perspective. And as well as uh, Marketplace's team already had that in place, so we had the extra benefit of using those learnings um, in-house as well. Cool. Thanks, guys. This is a, so it sounds like most people touched upon you know, choice on ability to take it and make it your own, ability to extend it, ability to customize it for the key kind of factors. Anything I missed out in summary of why, why OpenStack? And the community. There's a growing community that you can, can contribute to. Great. So when you started on this journey, what are the, some of the challenges you faced? Starting with like organizational challenges you know, to technical challenges. Good question. I'm sure Good this question. Out of them. Where do you start? <laughs> um, I think the technical challenges aside, I think everybody has a lot of smart people and everyone knows how to solve technical problems. Um, in my opinion, the biggest challenges are organizational challenges. Once you start bringing this type of technology into organization that is historically an IT shop, um, it's a lot of unknowns. Um, a lot of confusion because you start crossing boundaries that were historically very well defined. You have your compute teams, you have your networking teams, uh, you have your storage teams, and now you have this technology that combines it, that enables you to automate. And it's somewhere uncomfortable, I guess, for a lot of people. And um, I don't know how many of you attended the previous talk that Jonathan Picard did but we had to go as an organization to this transformation of we need to go from the IT shop into understanding of cloud technologies and how do you have people learning new skill sets and being comfortable with this technology. That, in my opinion, the biggest challenge. Technology is very solvable. There's a huge community, a lot of smart people. Mm -hmm. That's not a hard part. That's just my personal opinion. So to, to add to that, I think that the, the um, challenge that we, we saw is that um, when we developed our first cloud software, uh, uh, cloud automation solution, we didn't design it from the ground up to be a cloud. So there was a lot of uh, legacy infrastructure that we carried over. And um, when we, we embarked on the... OpenStack journey, we made the decision to really be like uh, an internal open, uh, open cloud or public cloud for our developers and our um, business units. So we, we try to design it from the ground up to be uh, like a cloud provider cloud, really a serious one, not just uh, a VM manager. And um, when we, we looked at that, we, we had to redesign everything from network to storage. And um, we, we, we looked at um, which team would support it because um, 
we started, we were only two developers um, bringing up this uh, new OpenStack infrastructure with network virtualization. And um, at some point, we wanted to scale out, so we, we tried to find how we build the teams around this solution. And it was clear that um, the traditional model is not working anymore because there's less separation between like the storage team, the networking team, and the, the compute team and everybody has to be kind of proficient in all those domains in order to bring up a cloud. So um, we, we, st we are still struggling to find the right balance between um, separation of concern, expertise in domains, but also having people that are uh, full stack developers or operators that are able to understand everything from storage all the way to um, the, uh, the, the automation stack. Yeah, I think it's interesting that um, not a lot of us are talking about the technical challenges which we, we know are there. Um, when we, uh, our current cloud Dream Compute um, is in beta at this point, but you know we've held it in beta for a long time mm -hmm. because uh, we just got to the Havana release and sort of doing continuous integration and there's definitely a lot of technical challenges. However, there's far fewer than there were two years ago and uh, so that's great, but I think the key thing is definitely um, it, it's, it's a people transformation challenge in that, and you know, both Yuri and JC have talked about this in that um, at, as a hosting company, we had a network engineering team, we had a systems administration team, we had a development team, and we were actually ahead of a lot of other companies in having you know, really a DevOps type of model. So the development team and the systems engineering, systems administration team were pretty tightly integrated. However, um, you know, there was definitely a silo on networking and networking is a great example where a lot of our um, systems administrators and engineers have really had to learn and understand networking um, to a much greater degree to be able to implement and operate um, OpenStack as part of, you know, as, as part of our, our basis for our cloud. So that's been a big people transformation challenge, but I think the reason to do it and why that shouldn't deter a company um, or a group from pursuing it is it's exact, this is the future. This is the way that um, technical teams are going to have to deal with software and implement software going forward. I think there will need to be a greater skill set level across networking, storage, virtualization. And uh, we're seeing that in our company, I think, you know, we're hearing from eBay and PayPal, they're seeing it in their company. And so that's, that's a big transformation that if you're not gonna do it now, you're gonna have to do it in a few years. So this is a great project to get involved in and start to train your teams in that way. So, um, so um, I think we are have a, having uh, same issues right in our team as well. Um, we started our um, project um, based based on uh, compute people, right? and the good thing about OpenStack it was, is its modularity, and you can integrate all different softwares uh, as a single system. And we were focusing on on the network side, so we were, we were join um, we were working together with the network people, and created a, created a a single team uh, with the compute people and the network people. And, and the issue there w was a sim similar one, but um, the co network people didn't know about the cloud, the cloud people didn't know about network. A and there were differences in, in the quality of service. Uh, the network people required more quality rather than the flexibility, uh, but you know, compute people like to have uh, flexibility and modularity. So those are the requirements, the difference uh, in requirements was the big issue for us and to integrate them uh, was uh, a big issue, yeah. So we had a couple of changes. One, uh, I guess two and a half years ago when we got involved with this, we were a very small team and um, we had to certainly um, broaden our skills across the, um, across the, the team to be more, um, in touch with, with some of the things you've, you've talked about. But one of the things for us particularly was um, a cultural change in that we, until that point, had been entirely reliant on vendor supplied software. So we went from being a, a pay, you know, pay for vendor software to 
um, embracing open source. And that's a kind of a big thing to manage in a, in a company because you are reliant on the vendor, you have a problem, you call vendor, vendor fixes. Um, whereas this, you know, it's really a lot about what you put into it and what you um, work with the community to, to bring your problems uh, into the community and help um, the people that are out there fix it. Um, and there's also, the, I guess, the, the thing with working with a, a business that was in, relying on vendor software, there's a, there's, I guess there's a, lot, a social aspect as well that you don't really um, interact with the vendors other than you just buy their stuff. Um, and one of the cool things for us is becoming involved with OpenStack and, and open source in general is coming to events like this and holding events and getting involved with the community and um, drinking beers with people and um, getting to know their business and they get to know your business and making great contacts. So there's a, there's a whole um, social aspect of, of open source that I think gets forgotten about a lot that's really, I find really great. Cool, it's, it sounds like you guys had a similar theme of how to create a single team. Um, different people started from different points in the, in the journey. Some people had established teams, some people had cloud established within the compute team, while there's some people who had smaller teams who, who learned other skills. But it sounds, the key takeaway is that we need people who kind of were like full stack DevOps, that people who can build the whole thing or understand. That's great. So before I proceed to more prepared questions I had, I want to see anybody in the audience have any, you know, it's a good topic, but how they structure any questions on that we would ask, like, like to ask any of the panelists here. So it, it sounds like your question is that uh, sometimes in some organization the silos get merged, but they don't completely merge. They just you still remain with at least two teams, or you know it just gets reduced. And your question specifically was how do you solve the challenge, or how do you instigate 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 the organization to solve the challenge? Would you guys have any ideas about how do you restructure or instigate the organization? Create a converge. I think I think theme. there's no easy way to do it other than just like communicate, communicate, communicate. So, for example, in our case, we had a senior network engineer that um, was all about quality of service, and he was like, "Nope, you know, the network is here, and no one's going to touch it. I'm not going to give anyone access to it. I'm going to configure it the way I want to configure it, and so on." And so, but what we did is we just we explained, you almost have to go back to basics and you know, bring those people along to OpenStack meetups, um, bring those people along to cloud events where they can actually talk to peers who've started to cross you know, and understand the difference of cloud, that you know, I can have a rack go down in my cloud because of a network issue and it's fine, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> it's distributed. So um, there's, there's aspects like that, that it's, a lot of it's just about, I think, you know, community, communication, and patiently stepping them through. And some people will make it and some people won't. And we actually, ourselves, candidly, we've had you know, probably four people who didn't make it. They just didn't make it. They couldn't make that leap and they went off to an enterprise that was not doing cloud and that was fine. So. Yeah, I think that in our, in our case, there's an additional thing that to, you have to take into account is that um, with the technologies that are coming up, the lines between each of those domains are blurring. So if you look at network virtualization, you have uh, uh, logical routers, you have logical switches, gateways that are in compute. When you look at storage, you have distributed storage like Ceph that are implemented on servers with large disks, right? Or many disks. So when you have a problem, how do you solve that problem? Like when you have a, an issue, uh, you, you have to have someone that either has all those three skills or you have to bring the three teams together and ask them to figure out the, where the problem is. And that's what is happening um, in our case, which is 
at the beginning, um, it was kind of, uh, I'm going to keep you at arm's uh, distance. So for example, networking team told us, or oh, if it's a uh, virtual networks, I'm not going to uh, support it. I'm going to help you, but that's it. Y you manage it. Uh, if it's uh, storage, the same thing. If it's distributed storage, uh, it's not like large sun, but I'm not going to manage it. So uh, at the end of the day, um, we, we had um, interesting project. So they started to be interested in those projects. People were asking, for example, the networking team, hey, how is network virtualization going? And those guys were like, I don't know, because I told those guys I'm not going to be involved, right? So now they started to want to be involved because everybody was asking them, hey, you're doing great thing in networking at eBay. How is it going? And those guys were, ah, I don't know. <laughs> Same thing for storage, right? So at, at the end of the day, they are seeing that there's an interesting, there interesting thing to do. And they are like, I, I want to be part of it. And that's happening with our storage team. We have now one storage guy in our team, and there's uh, some in the assembly. And uh, same thing for networking. That's good. Uh, you had one question earlier. Go ahead. Did it change the relationship? I, I think it did because in our case, with the introduction of cloud, we finally got introduced to DevOps, which didn't exist before, right? And with that, the capability that got provided by cloud and, and now are available to the end user, which is actually a developer, right? You're exposing developers to much more than they used to be before. Right. If you look, if we look back a year, in our case, it was very standard sort of procedure. The code is done. Here you go. You figure out how you're going to get it there. Where now they're enabled to do it, and the communication channel is much more open. What we see, we don't see so much finger pointing anymore. What we see is more of the open communication, saying, "Hey, I just tried it. It didn't work." Can you help me? What can I do? And we've, we've seen that leap on both sides. Less finger pointing, more working together, trying to solve the problem. Because my belief is once you remove this wall between IT and developers, they see the capabilities, they're interested as well, this technology. And they're willing to learn. They're willing to work with you versus just saying it's not my problem. If I can just add something. Um, once we had the all end and uh, we invited a developer that was one of our first users on the, our cloud platform. Um, and he told us that he wanted to name his son OpenStratus, which is the name <laughs> of our in internal pro uh, project. <laughs> So, and the, the reason why he was saying that is because before there's a, it took like developers up to seven weeks to bring up a new application live, including procuring hardware and deploying it. And um, with cloud and OpenStack specifically, because there's APIs, they are able to manage themselves their own pool of resource and deploy their application directly on that pool of resource. It's kind of enabling agility and at the same time, they are feeling that they, have, they are much more in control of what is going to happen. So we, we only see beneficial uh, outcome of this uh, change. Cool. We had a few other questions. Want to go first? <coughs> Uh, 
Very interesting question. <laughs> Uh, in our case, I, I can say that our experience is not that the younger uh, people were more apt to change than uh, older people. I am not very young. So <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the thing is, um, it, it more than the, the, the age, uh, it's more like the, the enthusiasm in what they are doing. And the, if they, they see the benefits, uh, I don't think that this, this would be an issue and it, it works across uh, all, all kinds of profiles. Um, in our experience, um, during our pre-production uh, testing, we were doing um, troubleshooting, uh, and when some trouble happens, we didn't know which system has a, the core root of the problem. So we cr created a troubleshooting team from each um, few members from each group, younger people, uh, to, to create a, a troubleshooting team to look the broader um, the project so that they can discuss internally between on different teams a and to have a broader knowledge of other systems by younger people so, so that this um, troubleshooting team could um, isolate um, issues for each team. So th th and those people um, could lead um, the um, communication between the teams. A and I think that, that was a good um, experience within our development. Good perspectives. So they were very traditional enterprise, I, I hear. They had a very different way of structuring and solving that problem. And we have even, it, so the crude takeaway, it seems like is, there is age, age is definitely not a barrier, so enthusiasm, and that's a few we want to target. We had a question over there. So your challenge, it sounds like, is uh, you know you have successfully the POC'd OpenStack, got it up and running. How do you now sell it internally within your organization to get the management buy-in before you can go roll it out to production? What you do is you um, you do a meeting with management <laughs> where you ask for requirements. You know you sort of like business requirements, of course, and and then. You know, you sort of be ahead of the game and plan it out where three days later you have a prototype up and running on the cloud. And you show it to them and they go, oh, is this running on some, you know, demo server? And, and you go, no, there it is. You know, I mean, to me, that's, that's the way to really sort of shock and awe management into understanding it and getting it. It gets back to what JC was talking about, you know, the fact that, that, uh, that uh, like, like right now we have a lot of our tech support team, uh, you know, self-provisioning cloud resources for their own stuff that they're working on, you know, at night. It's, and it's just the fact that they can, they can do it. They don't need to call anyone. They don't need to email anyone. <laughs> they don't need to ask permission. They just do it. So that sort of agility, I think. I think management gets that. That's, that's really, to me, the, the secret to unlocking that. Yeah, I, I just want to second that, actually. Um, for us, when we started, it was very similar, right? We built the initial deployment of cloud, and now how do you sell it? How do you actually make it production? And for us, it was very similar. We did exactly this, right? We came to our executives, and we said, look, here's the application. Let us show how it gets done, right? Couple of clicks, it's live, it's running. We didn't talk to any, anybody in the network. We didn't talk about any, to anybody in, we found no tickets, right? No change management for, it worked, right? And I think that's the big selling point, right? The business understands that, in my opinion, because at the end of the day, it's all about business, how fast you get your products out. When you show this agility, 
that's how you, you sell. Any other perspectives? Yeah, good. I had one more question over there. Well, it's, it's, we actually come full circle now, too. It's kind of a funny story. It, it, that was just really a catalyst um, because it was kind of a shock, and I think a shock to many people that, that the, the licensing model changed so rapidly, and I think that was backed off and, uh, and, and, and settled um, very rapidly as well. So it was kind of a shock to get, to get us into this. And, and what's, what's happened over the last two years since we, we took up OpenStack um, over the last year, we've actually turned around and gone back and worked with VMware um, quite closely with Dan Winlet's team on bringing OpenStack um, into, or well, wrapping OpenStack around VMware, we like to call it, we call it the wrapper. Um, and that's all to do with controlling vSphere, and we've, we've had a lot to do with those guys in um, getting that um, out to where they are now with NSX. So. It's kind of weird that we're still running pretty much the same core, um, vSphere-based core um, with OpenStack. We've also got you know, Hyper-V and, and um, KVM stuff running as well and, and looking at how we move workloads in and e easily in and out across those, um, those platforms. But um, so I guess in terms of saving money, it's, it's a bit hard to quantify because we're still basically using the same stuff as we were then. So um, we haven't really... We, where we have picked up here and there is we've moved things off and, and we're using the OpenStack sort of front end to, to, to run Hyper-V um, and running our Microsoft stuff on Hyper-V rather than running it on vSphere clusters. So um, that's certainly been a saving. Um, but as far as uh, that initial thing, it, it was just really a catalyst. It wasn't really a, a direct saving as such. Um, cool. Probably in terms of support, um, OpenStack is a multi-vendor system using multiple different software. So in terms of support, you have a, to have a multiple vendors supporting a, our, your system. Right? So sometimes a monolithic solution um, would be cheaper in terms of support. But it's kind of a trade-off, you know, having a flexibility in your system uh, and, or, or the monolithic system and, and the support um, with a team of uh, vendors and how you can lower the cost of support is a big issue. So I have to discuss with the vendors and find out the best solution um, for your required um, cloud system. So the concerning support is quite important. Cool. Uh, there's one more question here, right? Yeah. So I can uh, give you a p part of an answer, and the following uh, the answer can be uh, tomorrow. We, we have a, a talk uh, with my, one of my colleagues, um, Subo, um, about why OpenStack is not a cloud. And uh, I think that th when you get the software, uh, you, you might think that uh, you are done and you, you deploy it and you are up and running. But 90% uh, of our engineering efforts are spent into running OpenStack at scale with uh, sufficient SLA, which means um, like doing support on hardware, uh, building monitoring tools, uh, building um, additional functionality that, that we require to, to support our business. Because uh, out of the box, um, uh, OpenStack is more geared for um, service providers that have a single type of customers. Like a, a service provider is not going to care about what customers are running on their cloud. Every customer is the same, right? But in our case, uh, we had different requirements. We wanted to have differentiation on top of our cloud. So we, we are spending most of our engineering effort in operating the cloud. 
from uh, fulfillment, uh, like accelerating the, the pipeline to get servers in, uh, all the way to getting retirement, like tech refresh, repairing them, um, managing all the hardware, all the the configuration, all the like uh, upgrades, things like that. So still a lot of work. You're not done. Yeah, I would say this sort of speaks to both the questions that um, I remember the days in like 10 years ago when VMware was getting going and it was like, wow, look at this technology. It's fantastic, you know. And, and I think, you know, VMware brought this huge leap forward in virtualization and server consolidation and so on. And to some extent, I think one of the false truths of the cloud overall is that you know it's just going to get easier <laughs> it's not i mean it is always going to be hard because but when you think about when you think about cost and really what you're doing is you know you're comparing how many processes can i run you know for a particular unit of cost and you compare that 10 years ago to today to 10 years time that's going to be the real measure because if you're going to be competing you know, you've got to be able to leverage this, these new platforms and so on. So, um, and of course, the fact that, you know, VMware drove the virtualization trend all of a sudden opened up this entirely new opportunity for network virtualization and then now storage, software-defined storage and so on. So, so that's all part of it. But um, on the support side of things, yeah, I think it just depends on your talent pool at the company. I mean, we ourselves at DreamHost, we have a lot of... Um, you know, talented uh, engineers who work with Linux every day, you know, all the way up, have developed our own configuration management software and so on. So, so we, we don't need to get outside support, but it is a matter of choosing, you know, do you need to work with a distribution of OpenStack and therefore de-risk that aspect of it where you're going to have someone to go to, it's going to be able to help you with, you know, troubleshooting bugs or issues, you know, for example, with the, with the hypervisor and so on. So um, uh, making some of those choices, is just it really depends on where you are with your skill set. And I think as, as this moves forward, we'll start to see that really start to layer itself out. You know, there'll be incredibly robust OpenStack distributions that take a lot of the, the risk out of running it, um, ver be, be very, you know, suited to enterprise. And then there'll be sort of service provider I'm going to go with the open source code and not really pay anyone, but maybe I, you know, maybe I get support for particular modules um, and so on, network or storage and, and that sort of thing. I think it's sort of a matter of making those choices. So it sounds like you guys are saying op uh, running OpenStack doesn't take away the problem of getting good engineers and good teams who can actually run at the IT talent pool. Those still stay the same or it becomes more complex even. I, I don't know if it's more complex. It's a different scale. I, I think that you have the multiplier is higher, right? So for every effort that you spend in the cloud, you have higher return. However, that, that initial um, tax is still going to be there. I, I'm sure you can uh, hire someone to, to run the cloud for you, but at the end of the day, there's still hardware to manage. There's still data centers to, to provision, to uh, lease, manage. Like all that aspect is not going away unless you go with a public cloud, right? Great. I think we're coming close to the end of the session. Um, before I close it, I want to make sure we, everybody gets a chance to give, you know, any kind of the top three things you wish you knew when you started on your journey, like you would do differently. Or, yeah, let's get started there. I would probably say one thing that I would have done differently is to invest into operational components of OpenStack from the beginning, right? It was a natural, I guess, reaction is, let's get the product out, right? Throw the software engineers at it, make it work. We'll deal with the operational aspect of it once we get there, right? But once it balloons, now you have to play catch-up games and that's tough. So that's probably the number one thing that I would have done different. Everything else, we'll get there. 
Yeah, I'm going to mention also only one also. I think that for me the top one is uh, it's focusing on the team that, that you're building. And the, the, the main reason is that um, about what we talked about before, like the skill set that you need to have. Make sure that you have the right skill set when you start because it's going to be harder and harder over time to backfill those positions if you, you are not planning to get the right people in order to operate uh, the cloud at scale. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, we, we invested pretty early on in getting our people to, you know, OpenStack summits, to meetups, um, and so on. But I would, I, personally, I would double down on that <laughs> because um, even though there's travel cost, even though there's, you know, time away from programming or running your operations and so on, just, you know, even I see it from our team. We Here we have, I think, 10 DreamHost team members. Uh, you know, we have product managers, Justin, founder, Dallas. Hey, Dallas, I can see you there. Um, you know, we have systems engineers and so on, and they can, if they can make one connection at a summit or at a meetup that happens to be in the city, and and if they openly talk about their problems, like what is the problem you are having today with this implementation, they can find a solution to it. And I think, once again, that's that's the difference. That's the world that we're in today. Um, technical team members, the technical team members that flourish are those that learn how to communicate in this new world, how to engage at a summit, how to how to acknowledge. You know, hey, I don't know everything. I got a bug or I got an issue. How how would you solve this? That sort of thing. So, and, and that's all all there, of course. But that's that's probably the biggest thing. Just invest and and get t get as many team members as you can into the community, and make sure that they know that it's okay for them not to know everything. That it's fine. That's part of it. Um. We started the development of OpenStack um, three years ago, and we put our resources on the development of uh, Diablo. And what we didn't do then was to upstream our patches to the community. So, because it was you know faster to to keep it in house, so that you can do it whatever you want. So uh, we didn't put much resources effort to to we, we did, but we didn't put enough resources to upstream. So eventually, our branch became very different from the community, right? And now we're trying to move back to the community. So we're trying to upstream every patch that we have in-house. So um, that costing us very much. So uh, for those of you trying to add something to OpenStack, you should do it upstream it as fast as possible and sync with the community so that it's much easier um, to sync up with the community, and that is a big issue that <laughs> we should have done yeah. three years ago. Yes. Cool. One minute. We're running out of time. Okay. I'll make it quick. Um, less a, a, a technical aspect, but a business aspect. Look at your business drivers. What are you going to build? Um, figure out what you're going to build, and then go back and check the business drivers again, and then go back and have an another look at what you're going to build, and then go back and check your business drivers again. Um, over the last two and a half years, we've been through um, Swift deployments and compute deployments and all sorts of things. I mean, we, I don't know how many times we've ripped our stuff out and, and built it again and, and turned it over and thought we were chasing rabbits down holes here and shooting at rabbits over there. Um, but what it came back to in the end is we need to look for the low-hanging fruit, the things that would really sell, um, and build on that and then go back and check it again. So check your business drivers. It's all about that. Great. Thanks, guys. Let's give our esteemed panelists a round of applause. Thanks for coming. <laughs>